Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we're going to learn how to rebuild Recaro seats. I picked up a used set off Craigslist for not too much money. I want to put them in my Mustang, so we're going to be looking at how to do that on the cheap without blowing the budget. Stay tuned. All right, so what we have here are two Recaro LSB seats from an early 90s VW GTI. Um, these came in a lot of Volkswagens, um, I guess, you know, primarily in like the late 80s to mid 90s, um, specifically is from GTI, like I just said. Um, the way you can tell the different Recaro seats apart is really the, um, the upper halves. The bottom halves, um, in this case, are the B models. So they have the same bolsters that you'll see in, um, in a lot of the different seats. Um, so the way you can tell the difference is with the top bolsters, the LS models have kind of a rounded, broader bolster up here on the top that kind of hugs you, hugs your upper torso and doesn't let you move around a whole lot. The LX models, which are found in the BMW 320i, really popular, famous on the internet. Um, they're used in BMW 2002 swaps. They've got a really nice classic look. So when people think uh, Recaro and pulling that from an old you know, VW or Mercedes or whatever, those are typically the things that, that come to mind, the LXB models. Um, so these are the LSB models. They've got the broader bolster from the VW GTI. They're a little grungy. Picked them up on Craigslist for about 300 bucks. Um, I, I, that's kind of the going rate. You can find them as low as 200 or free, um, all the way up to 500. Some guys are charging that, I guess, if they're in really nice mint condition. Um, these are pretty grungy. So we are going to get these cleaned up and um, I'm actually going to reshape some of the bolsters, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And then what we're going to do is do a quick vinyl spray dye job. Um, I've got some Duplicolor stuff that we're going to basically just spray paint the seats and it works. I've used it on cars before. Um, you know, occasionally you have to reapply, but it's, it's a lot cheaper than reupholstering. Now you can get reupholstery kits for these exact model seats. Um, there's a seller on eBay that sells kits uh, in black vinyl or really any color vinyl that you want. It's about 500 bucks. I don't want to do that right now. That would take budget out of other areas that I want to put into the car. So we're just going to get these rebuilt bolster wise and sprayed and back in the car. That's the plan. And hopefully in an afternoon. All right, let's get started. So this step probably isn't critical, I guess you could say, but to me it's very important. So I think it's important to consider when you're buying new seats and somebody's ass has been in those seats for who knows how many years and judging by the condition of these side bolsters, the individual who sat in these seats for a long period of time may have been on the larger side. Uh, these seats may not have been designed with that person in mind. So what I'm going to do is I have a carpet cleaner. I'm going to just go and give these things a once over. You just have no idea what's happened to them. Um, and since I'm keeping the upholstery and thin layer of foam underneath, uh, I think it's a good idea. So let's do some carpet cleaning. Look at that. I don't know if that's coming in on camera, but that's pretty nasty. Um, I don't think all of that was in the seats, but it's a brown liquid that I really don't want any part of. And I'm glad it's not in my seats anymore. Um, all right, what I'm going to do next is I have to start disassembling these. I've got to take the rails off the bottom. Um, so I'm going to get into that. And then we just need to uh, peel back the upholstery on the bottom half of the seat. So I'm going to disassemble that and uh, hopefully show you guys how to do that. Just a quick note on the rails. Um, these are actually original Mustang 
rails um, that are modified with some really heavy gauge mild steel. Um, I kind of made my own brackets to just realign them and reposition them in the bottom of the car seat so stuff. Pretty standard bolt pattern. I found these Allen bolts or Allen head bolts that all basically bolt right in. They kind of fit right next to the rail and position these things perfectly. And I use the original adjusters. Maybe not ideal. I probably could use a more modern adjuster that comes with modern Recaro uh, seats, but I really wanted the, the original look and feel, so I'm going to stay with the original. Okay, I don't know if <laughs> you guys just saw that. Uh, basically, the bolsters just kind of fall apart as you pull them out. It's really nasty. Uh, it looks like they're just disintegrating. You know? So at least the inside part of it uh, has been damaged. So um, basically, the easiest way to pull these off or to pull the fabric off is there's these little pins that hold this wire on that's attached to the upholstery. Um, I, I'm just taking a little... Um, a little punch and a hammer and just kind of hitting the top of it so that it pushes the, um, the pin that's holding the cable which is attached to the upholstery and it's I can just pull it out by hand once I get the pin um, stop compressing it so I'm just going to do the other side and I'll uh, watch that fall out into kind of similar disgusting mess. Actually, you can probably see now the main issue with this design is that this steel hoop goes right up through the middle of this bolster with no protection on the inside of the foam. So, you know, it doesn't matter how big or small the person getting in the car is, anytime anybody touches this bolster, it's going to get jammed right into this piece of metal, which over time is just going to chew away the inside of the bolster and from the inside out. It's going to get destroyed. So, we're going to fix that when I create my new bolster, but first I'm going to finish getting all this stuff out. That chewed right through it. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull the other side off, which is in really good shape still, or what I think is really good shape, and we're going to use that as a template for the other side. So we're going to take the one from the driver's seat, use that as the bolster for the outside of the passenger seat, and vice versa. So I have two seats, two destroyed bolsters, two good bolsters opposite sides, so I'm fortunate enough that I have templates to work from to rebuild the bolsters that I need to for each seat. And there, believe it or not, is a good bolster. So I somehow have to recreate that out of the phone that I have. Awesome. Decent bolster number two. And uh, put this seat back out, dry off, and then get to making some bolster templates.
Okay, so the bolster in the top half of the seat is actually all one piece that goes all the way around. Um, to get that out, it was just a series of more um, more trim that folds up under plastic lips, so you just kind of have to look and, and pry around. There's, there's no big secret to it. Uh, but it's actually all one piece that goes all the way around the top and the two sides, so I'm going to have to cut. I think what I'm going to do strategically is cut um, along this, this seam, right as the, the two pieces of fabric come together and make it So I'm going to razor and cut that off. Inside, you know, you can tell it's the same core design. They've got a bar here on this that just pushes down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find a um, piece of a plastic like a milk jug or a detergent jug, something like that, and make my own baffles for the inside of these. So it's plastic, pressing against plastic, that should protect the foam and I shouldn't ever have to do this again. Or the person who gets these seats after me, after I buy some nice new Recaros, a while from now, uh, we we'll have to do this either. So, Okay, so the recipe for making your own foam cushions, bolsters, animals, whatever, is really pretty simple. Um, you need a template, assuming you're recreating something or trying to restore something, um, in which case I have three here. You need some high density foam. Um, I actually had to call around to an auto upholstery shop, or two or three, and the guy flew me into um, a place locally that actually sells this. Well, not locally. Um, this is from House of Foam in Palo Alto. Um, I'll drop the, their address or number or whatever in the description of the video just in case you're local to California. Um, so this is super high density foam, um, five inches thick. I just bought this whole cube. I had no idea how much I needed. Um, in my head, I thought I needed more than I did, but now that I get these bolsters out, it looks like I probably could have made it through maybe half of this. Um, this was a hundred bucks, this little thing. But it's, um, it's actually saved me a lot of money because each of these bolsters um, they're only sold by one company in the UK, Capital Seating, and I believe they're about, with exchange rate, probably 70 US each ship. Not ship, not ship. Um, 70 each US, so I would have needed three of them. Well, this, I probably couldn't even buy this big one. I probably would have had to buy the whole back. I don't even know how much that is, but I know the bottom side bolsters are 70 each for the Recaro LS seats. And, um, you know, so you factor in shipping and everything else that you're looking at probably close to 200, 300 all in. Um, in which case, you know, I've got this guy here for 100. And if I need more bolsters, I'm gonna have foam up there, assuming I don't screw anything up. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, um, basically I'm gonna trace these out with a Sharpie, uh, try to use, you know, as little foam as I can to give myself some room to work with. And then the, the key to this, which I read on the internet, and the guy at the upholstery shop told me was this, uh, Thanksgiving, cut turkey, um, you probably find something at your uh, local dollar store, not dollar store, but like a, a thrift store. People just chuck these all the time, they don't see use for them. This one happened to come to my parents who have one, and they use it once a year on Thanksgiving, so thanks mom and dad. Um, so yeah, I'm going to trace these out and then we're going to take this out of cutting them and see if it actually works. Now that I have these pieces laid out on this chunk of foam, um, I actually didn't do too bad because uh, they don't, they're tight wise, the foam isn't thick enough, so I am actually going to have to go horizontal on them. And they basically created a misfit. So, uh, not going to have any foam left over, but I've got enough for what I need. So, that's good. research is that this stuff, um, basically the only thing you can cut it is a knife like this, turkey carving knife, electric knife, whatever, I don't know exactly what the name of this called. This is a Hamilton Beach uh, Scoville, S-C-O-B-I-L-L, -L, whatever that means. Um, 
so yeah, now what I'm going to do is, uh, I guess I'm going to take some measurements and just try to rough the shape out um, using this. And then I also heard that a um, some kind of really fast orbital sander, belt sander, something like that you can use to do your final shaping. So um, on one of my discarded pieces, I might try that and see what that looks like. Um, I have a belt sander that I can throw in the bike, so I don't have one of those nice sanding wheels. If you have one of those bench top sanding discs, giant belt sander things, that would probably be ideal. Um, but I don't have that, so I'm going to make something else out of it after I get to be close. Okay, so it looks like my maximum width of these guys is actually three and a quarter, so I think what, I'm gonna, what I am going to do is to uh, cut this foam down to three and a quarter width, not three and a quarter, I'll probably do three and a half, give myself a little extra work. So I'm making progress. Um, here's my original there, and here is my light smooth. It's coming along. This stuff is not easy to work with. Um, I also shape surfboards occasionally. Um, that compared to this is so much easier. Um, and I, I guess that's the difference between uh, the guy at the upholstery shop or the, the foam shop said. Um, I guess this is called um, closed cell? No, open cell, um, which gives it a soft property on the foam expert. That's my guess. Um, so it's just really hard to work with. I mean, you're working with a turkey knife, and that's basically the best tool for the job. And this professionals tell me this. It's great. Um, so that's all I can do today. Um, unfortunately, it's the end of my weekend. I had a busy weekend. I wasn't able to hang out the garage as much as possible. Um, so, I am going to have to find some time during the week, uh, maybe weeknights, and at least try to get one of these done so that I can get one seat back together and paint it and show you guys. Um, it, this is just too time consuming and tedious to even show with accelerated video and music. I think eventually it just be really boring to watch. Um, so, I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to put some nights in this week. I'm going to get this to where I want it so I can at least get one of my seats back in action and um, show you guys how to do that. And then magically, through the power of video and the internet, I will show you both seats. Probably not by the end of this episode. This episode, I'm just going to show you one and I'll see the magic. All right, um, calling it for today, but I'll be back on night this week. Okay, welcome back to day two of how to fix your Recaros on the cheap, on a budget. Um, so where I left off yesterday is I had this uh, bolster kind of roughed out to where it almost starts to look like the original Recaro bolster. I've got some more work to do with that on um, on the surface, um, just using this turkey carving knife and continuing to get it just down to a little bit closer to the size of the original. Um, once I get it there, I'm going to use a high-powered uh, air sander to do the final contouring. Um, hopefully I can find something that gets it smooth enough so that when I put it back in the upholstery to test, it kind of looks original and I don't see any of these um, hard edges that I have on there right now. So, gonna get started with that and see where we get.
So I think that works. Um, basic takeaway, like I said outside, is uh, if you're using a high-powered sander like that, just remember the foam's really delicate. So um, just watch the edges of the sander because you can cut right into the foam and slice a big chunk off real, real easily. So um, it's a really heavy tool to have to use in that kind of delicate way. Usually you just plop it on a big piece of metal and, and sand away. Um, so foam, definitely a little bit more delicate operation, but it works. It's better than the turkey carving knife, and when you put it in the upholstery, uh, everything smooths out because the upholstery is pretty thick, so it'll cover up any minor surface defects you have in the foam. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just cut the remaining two. I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, thanks to the magic of video editing, uh, next time I come back, unless I have any helpful hints along the way, um, I should have three finished bolsters. Okay, so all the bolsters are done. I have my driver's side on the left side, which goes on the outside, my passenger side, which goes on the Side. These are the ones that get destroyed the most because it's just ingress and egress out of the car. So um, these are the two I'm replacing. Um, next thing I need to do, oh, and lastly the driver's side um, side bolster, what do they call it? Kidney bolster? Something like that. It's whatever one goes next to your side. Um, that was kind of destroyed too, so I just decided to do that. It had one little slit right here in the middle, but it, over time, with just even me getting in and out of it, it deteriorated because these are. 20 something year old seats. Um, so next thing I need to do is I need to find some plastic that I'm gonna go ahead and secure inside the foam. I'm gonna make a little U-shaped channel like that, um, secure it inside the foam, and then that way that can rest on that metal bar that we saw in the seat, which is the culprit of this entire operation. Um, that's why these bolsters were destroyed because there's a metal bar in there pressed against the foam over a couple thousand uh, people getting into the car. Not not people, but like one person or five people getting in. Anyway, um, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna re-support these guys and um, then we're gonna get seats back together and then we are going to repair some cigarette holes. Why do people smoke? Now? I just don't get it. Um, repair some of those uh, on the cheap and then finally, we're going to get to dyeing the fabric and getting these things in the color that we want. Um, gotta find some plastic. Okay, so I found some plastic, and uh, this actually came from a slippery orange orange jug. So any kind of flexible plastic like this should work. Um, people have used like detergent bottles to be a little thicker and apply a little bit. This, this should work fine. Um, I, I scavenged enough from one container for my both my side bolsters. I still have to find something that will work for the upper bolster, so I will do that. Um, but the way this works is, or at least as I understand it, is um, you have these contours which kind of go up against the rail on the inside of the foam cushion, and then you basically just put your little plastic insert in here, and there, and the rail kind of just slides right into the plastic and it rubs against the plastic, doesn't bother your foam. In theory, it should last a lot longer. So, one for there. Okay, so those, those are done. Um, the next thing I am going to do is um, I have these two bottom cushions. Um, this one has a giant cigarette hole here, and it's amazing. You buy a Volkswagen GTI, one of the nicer cars back in the 90s for what it was, and then you smoke in it and drop cigarettes at the same time. So that's way to go. Um, but anyway, so. I've seen um, basically how you can fix these on the cheap is um, you need a couple things. You need a seat with a hole in it, um, and then you basically need to find a part of the seat with a similar color that, um, that you can pull a scrap of fabric from, or not a scrap, but that you can um, scrape some lint from with a uh, razor blade. So basically what you do is, like on this seat right here, um, this part goes in the bottom, it goes facing the carpet, and you'll ever see it in any normal scenario. And you basically just run the razor over the surface, collect that little lint ball that will accumulate.
accumulate and then um, take some contact cement, drop it in the hole, and then put the lint on top and disguise it. And you can even take the razor blade once you do that and kind of draw on the lines you need to make it a good one. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. I've never done it before. I've only seen videos of people doing it, so I'm going to try it and see what happens. Once it happens, it's like it's some glue in the hole. Which is what I probably do anyway. So, good luck. The way I'm reassembling these seats is I want to put my new foam, new bolsters towards the outside where it'll take the most abuse. Um, reusing two of my original ones just because for the most part they were in good condition. Uh, one of them a little crack, but it's on the inside so it shouldn't, shouldn't take any really. Nobody should really touch the thing. So, I um, want my new ones on the outside. They take all the impact. Um, still, I've realized I had to put some other um, of these plastic shields in my old posters. I realized I had to put some um, plastic in my old bolsters to protect them further um, so that they last a while. So I did that. I got some thinner gauge plastic from the recycling bin. Um, so that's in there using contact cement just to kind of secure it in place. I don't want to use it a whole lot. And um, what I'm going to do now is try to reassemble the bases um, using my new foam on the outside. So this is my driver's seat which I believe it is, then that's where I'm going to start. So now that I um, have all the foam done for one seat, um, I just want to go ahead and get it painted. Um, I need to see what that's going to look like. I'm just dying it out. Um, so I'm going to prep for paint. I have a couple little things to mask off, like the, the seat release handle and then these, these chrome uh, headrest and boards. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go outside and paint.
Okay, so I got the seat all painted, um, all put back together, and what I thought was done. Uh, but unfortunately, these things, especially when you do them the first time, don't always go exactly as you plan. So um, the one thing I realized is that on this seat, I actually installed the bolsters on the wrong side. Total rookie move. Um, was trying, was rushing yesterday to try to get it done in, in the afternoon that I had to work on it. Um, didn't quite happen that way. I'm, I'm sure you guys can relate to that. You get into a project, you just want to see it done. You're excited, especially something like this where it's going to be like something you sit in every time you drive the car. Um, so I got a little ahead of myself, um, so what I'm going to do now is I need to take this apart, just the bottom, fortunately, the top one's good, um, that was the, a little bit harder. Um, so I'm going to take these two bolsters out, swap the sides, and they should actually go in a lot easier than the first time. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that, and then this seat is done. Alright, so a couple quick notes. Um, when you're doing this and you've got your new bolsters, the, um, the thick padded part goes to the inside, inside of the seat. It's got to press up against it and this bottom cushion should be a nice snug fit. Um, the mistake I made is I, I assumed that because of the way you just kind of visualize bolsters and these performance seats and how they look, is that they've got this big thing and you think that the big side should be on the outside because that's just how they look. Um, it's actually kind of counterintuitive. The padded side, well, it's not when you really think about it. The padded side goes to the inside because that's where you're gonna need the most support. Um, you'll know pretty, pretty quickly if you make the same mistake that I just made because there will be a lot of gap here in the side of the bottom cushion. Um, so that's, that's what I did. I'm just gonna finish uh, cleaning this up a little bit and then reassembling the seat. Okay, so here's the finished product. This is one black Recaro driver's seat LSB model. Um, you can kind of see some of the bolster wear on the fabric, the upholstery kind of came through. Um, it, it didn't really, the paint really didn't cover that, so that's just something that I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, but you know what? These are good enough structurally and they will blend in this black interior and not look out of place. Um, so to me, that's, that's kind of important. Um, so yeah, overall, super happy with how they turned out. Um, they're gonna be great seats. They're way better, way better than the stock seats that came in this car. So super excited to get them installed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a wrap. Okay, so that's a wrap on this episode. Got a lot of stuff done. Um, basically rebuilding seats takes a while. It, it took me probably, you know, two whole days elapsed time to rebuild just the one seat. Actually, no, I, that's, that's a lie, to rebuild both seats. Um, I just haven't painted the one because I still have to get the paint. So next time you see these seats, they will actually be in the car, installed, and we'll see what that looks like. I mean, to me, it's it's really cool to see how they came out and um, you know to see that basically they're not gonna look out of place inside the car, and that's the most important thing. You know, for me, I, I like the cars to look pretty much stock, how they may have come from the factory given some upgrades. Um, I like tasteful modifications, so these seats kind of fit right in that, that wheelhouse, that right in that little sweet spot that I like. Um, so super excited about that, made some good progress. Um, overall, happy with the episode. Turned out a little bit long, so I, I guess that's, that can be good or bad. 
Um, next episode, I'm actually gonna tackle another project involving seats in the interior. So stay tuned for that if you're into vintage Mustangs and interesting things going on with the back seat, but not in that way that you might think I mean, but I don't mean. Um, anyway, if you like the channel, uh, subscribe, throw me a like if you like the video. Love to hear any feedback, comments you guys have. Thanks for watching.